So I'm sure by now you've already seen the leaked images or the promo images of the upcoming Union LA Nike Dunk Lows. And what's crazy is that even though these shoes don't even have a release date yet, they're still becoming one of the most hyped up releases of the entire year. Well actually that might be crazy, but in my opinion this is even crazier. And that's that I actually have an early pair for me to review for you guys. Scratch that, I actually have two early pairs. What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today I'm reviewing two of the upcoming Union LA Nike Dunk Lows. But before we get into the video, I want to give a huge thank you to the sponsor and the people who made this entire video possible because they provided these shoes, and that's Kicks World. So in my opinion, Kicks is solving a really big problem that we have in the sneaker community, and that problem is that we're spending way too much money on sneakers. A lot of times, the sneakers that we want sell out before we even have a chance to grab them, and if we really want them, we have to end up paying resale prices for them. And it's the worst when you spend like $400 on a pair of sneakers and realize once you have it that you don't even like it that much. So the way that Kicks solves this problem is that there is a subscription service that allows you to try sneakers before you buy them. So with my Kicks membership, I was able to try out this pair of Union LA Nike Dunk Lows to make sure that I actually liked it before I spent resale on it. And the best part is, if you end up liking the sneaker that you grab through your Kicks monthly subscription, you can buy it through Kicks, and part of your Kicks membership goes towards the resale price of the shoe. So for example, if I wanted to try out both of the upcoming Union LA Nike Dunk Lows, I could get them both through Kicks and then decide which one I actually wanted after trying it on with a bunch of different outfits and seeing which pair I wore more. And not to ruin the review for anybody, but if I had to pick one of these colorways to keep, it would probably be this one. So if you guys want to check out Kicks for yourself, which I definitely recommend so you can try sneakers before you buy them, make sure to click my link in the top of the description so you guys can get started. And once again, huge thank you to Kicks for providing these sneakers to make this video possible. But with all that being said, let's dive right into the review. So one thing I wanted to do before we actually got into the sneakers themselves, and it's something that I do in a lot of my reviews, I actually wanted to talk about the box, and I felt like it was especially important in this video because no one's really seen these boxes boxes before because these shoes haven't come out yet. Well, okay, I guess some people have seen these boxes through the leaked images that I talked about earlier, but I do have to say that Union LA really did their thing on this packaging design. So as we'll get into later on in the video, the inspiration behind this collaboration is travel. More specifically, the travel that the owners of Union LA had to do in order to find sneakers to fill their stores when they were first starting out. So as you may have noticed, the design of this box is based off an old school plane ticket. And I know it's crazy to say old school plane ticket because people still use plane tickets, but nowadays most people use their phones and Usually when you get a plane ticket, it doesn't come out of like that machine right at the front desk. It comes out of that little like self-service kiosk and it usually comes out in white paper. It's a boring ticket, but back in like the, I guess mid 2000s, maybe 90s, tickets did look like this because a lot of people got their tickets at the front desk. And personally, I really like this aesthetic. I like the sort of hidden and multiplied Nike logos. I love Union LA's subtle tribute to the late Sidney Poitier with their haloed silhouette. But because this box is themed off of an airline ticket, you do get all these cool little printed details throughout. Like you've got a bunch of dates that I'm sure are significant to Union LA and probably the founders of Union LA. And also it helps this box stand out from all of the other boxes that you have in the back of your closet. And it just makes you want to pull this box out and wear whatever is inside because it's so different and it's so cool looking. And actually inside the box it gets even cooler because when you open up the box, you'll notice this special edition passport themed paper. Honestly, these details are just so well thought out. I love it. I love all the personal touches that went into this. And I'm sure there's a lot of things that I'm missing just because I'm not too familiar with their story. But I'm sure if we talk to the founder of Union in LA or anyone who's worked there a long time, they'd be able to tell us all the little hidden touches that are in here, because I'm sure there's a bunch. Then on the front of the box, you've got the size tag. Obviously this box is for the darker blue pair, and I think the official colorway of this pair is Midnight Navy, which I'm assuming is what the official name of that shoe will be. Now unfortunately, in the Midnight Navy colorway, I was only able to get a size 10 and a half, so as you may have already noticed in the on-foot footage, or you definitely will notice now, the Midnight Navy colorway doesn't fit me that great because I'm a size nine. But I also have the box for the other pair over here, which did come in a size nine and a half, which I can fit. And the official colorway for this pair is Hyper Royal White Psychic Blue. And I'm assuming that they probably will go with the Hyper Royal naming scheme on this particular colorway. Now, as you may have noticed on the first box, the suggested retail price of this pair is $150. And I think out of the three colorways that are dropping, because there are three colorways that are dropping, each pair will retail for that price. Now, the third colorway, if you're interested, looks like this. And I don't know the official name of this shoe either. The only reason I was able to guess the official names of these shoes is because I looked at the official colorways of these shoes. And because I don't have the box for that pair, I'm 
I'm not sure exactly what it's gonna be, but I'm assuming because official images of these shoes are coming out, they will probably release in the very near future. And from what I'm hearing, the release of these shoes might coincide with the 30th anniversary of Union LA. If not these guys, then it'll be the Air Jordan 2s, but no one really knows for sure. And if you look at the tag on the inside of these shoes, you can actually look at the production dates of when these shoes were made. And it looks like these shoes were produced between May of last year and October of last year. So these shoes have been sitting in a warehouse for the last couple months, which again leads me to believe that I think the release of these shoes is imminent. But now that we've taken a closer look at the boxes, let's take a closer look at the shoes themselves. So like I said, we've got the Midnight Navy colorway and the Hyper Royal colorway. And both of these colorways, while similar, do have some pretty noticeable differences. However, the materials that make up both of these shoes seem to be identical. So as I mentioned before, the inspiration behind this collaboration is the travel that the original founding members of Union LA had to do in order to get product for their stores. And because of that, it seems like the primary material used on the upper of these shoes is this ripstop plastic mesh. And that's because this material can be found very often on suitcases and on luggage. And actually, over the last couple years, Nike has started utilizing this material a lot. They've used it on the Element React 87s, they've used it on the Off-White UNC Air Jordan 1s, and they've used it on actually a lot of the other Off-White sneakers. So it really has become a more common material used on Nike sneakers. However, we don't often see a pair made up almost entirely of this material. So starting off around the toes of both of these shoes, as you probably could have guessed because I just talked about it, but the mudguard of these shoes are made up of that plastic mesh ripstop. Now one of the things that you're supposed to be able to do with this sneaker, but unfortunately I can't show you because I'm borrowing this pair and I have to return it, is that you can apparently remove some of the ripstop material on the upper and reveal some leather underneath. However, based on the edges of the leather and the grain of the leather that you can see on the edges of the side panels, it doesn't look like amazing quality leather. I'm sure it's fine, I'm sure it works, but it's not going to be like this insane buttery experience. Plus, I don't think a lot of people will remove the ripstop material on the upper because one, it's probably a lot of work, and two, it'll hurt the resale value. And in kind of an interesting detail, you'll notice that this ripstop material doesn't have a finished edge, which means that over time it will probably fray. Now it seems like Nike may have accounted for that a little bit because they added three different layers of stitching around the edges of each one of these panels, which means that it can't really fray past the stitching, and the top layer of stitching is actually right up near the edge, so the fraying should be relatively minimized, but it will still happen. Speaking of the triple stitching, you'll notice that the two bottom layers of stitching, or I guess bottom lines of stitching, seem to be very um, random. They don't exactly match the outer line of the panels that they're on, which most Nike stitching usually does. Obviously, these stitching details were done more as an accent piece than actually to reinforce the material. However, I'm sure that they do actually reinforce the material. But on both of these pairs, you'll notice that the top layer of stitching acts as the standard stitching and is kind of hidden away. And then the bottom two layers are more of the accent details that kind of come in these wavy, almost like hand-done lines. And on this light blue colorway in particular, you can really see these lines because they come in a bright, contrasting orange. Now, I'm assuming that the reason that they added these details was to make the shoe feel a little bit more handmade, which it definitely does. And honestly, while I didn't like them at first, they are starting to grow on me a little bit and uh, I'm starting to like them. As you continue up on both of these shoes to the toe of the sneaker, you'll notice that the color of the material changes, or at least the color underneath this ripstop material changes. Both of these colorways feature that iconic perforation detail on the toe, which honestly on this particular collaboration probably doesn't do much because you've got so many layers of material above your foot, it probably doesn't really let any air in, so it's not really gonna ventilate your foot, but it looks good. As you continue up on both of these shoes, you'll notice that the ripstop material continues up onto the tongue of each of these shoes. And it seems like the tongues on both of these collaborations change from the color that you find on the toe to just a solid white. Speaking of solid white, both of these colorways came laced up with flat white laces. Now, as you probably could have guessed, both of these shoes do come with an extra set of laces. In the case of the Midnight Navies, they come with a dark blue lace. And then in the case of the Hyper Royals, they come with a lighter blue lace. So if you decide to switch out from these white laces, you do have some more options. Personally though, I don't mind these white laces because they do tie into the midsole pretty nicely. And uh, I don't know, they don't really bother me. At the top of the tongue of both of these sneakers, you've got your Nike logo, which obviously changes color depending on which colorway you're looking at. Then moving inside both of these sneakers, you'll find a very well padded sock liner that comes in a dark navy or a light blue, depending on which colorway that you're looking at. And then rounding off the inside of both of these shoes, on the insoles, you've got alternating designs printed on the heel. But now getting into sizing and fit, obviously I can only really speak on the sizing of this pair because this is the only pair that really came in my size. And again, it is a half size up. But I will say comparing this to some other size nine and a half Nike dunks that I have, or recent release Nike dunks that I have in a size nine and a half, it fits very similarly. And because of that, I would say that this shoe does seem to fit true to size. So I would say if you're grabbing a pair of these through Union LA or maybe through the sneakers app, whichever place releases them first, go true to size. But as I always suggest, if you have the opportunity to try on this pair first before you buy it, like say maybe you have a Kicks subscription, definitely make sure to do that to make sure that you're grabbing the right size for you. Then continuing back in the shoe, you've got more of that ripstop material on the midfoot and of course on the eye stays of the sneaker. And then 
then in the center of the midfoot, you've got this really interesting, almost iridescent, shiny Nike swoosh. On the Hyper Royal pair, it's sort of iridescent. You don't really get too many other colors in there, so maybe it's not iridescent, maybe it's just shiny. But on the Midnight Navy colorway, it just comes in like this metallic silver. And in kind of an interesting detail, it seems like on both sides of the Nike swoosh, on the tip of the front, and then on the back of the Nike swoosh, you have these unfinished stitching details. I'm not sure exactly why they did that, maybe to make it look frayed, like it's been through some travel. Honestly, I didn't really love that fraying detail on the Sean Watherspoon Adidas Superstars. I felt like it was too much. But on this shoe, because it's kind of limited to just the Nike swoosh, it doesn't really bother me. Obviously, depending on the colorway, the stitching on the Nike swoosh matches the accent stitching on the rest of the upper of the shoe. And of course, this wouldn't be a Union LA Nike collaboration if you didn't have that bright yellow Union LA tag. Then, continuing back on the shoe towards the heel of the sneaker, you've got more ripstop material, again, with the accent stitching. And then on the lateral side of the heel of both of these shoes, you've got this really interesting sort of plastic rivet detail. Actually, I'm not sure if that's plastic or painted metal. Then moving around to the heel of both of these shoes, you've got more ripstop, you've got more of the accent stitching, and then at the top of the heel, you've got the same material that they use on the Nike swooshes on the Nike logo portion of the heel. Moving down on both of these sneakers, you get to your standard white Nike Dunk midsole, and then finally getting to the bottom of both of these shoes, you have a semi-translucent rubber outsole. And as you can tell on the Hyper Royal colorway, you've got more of an icy blue outsole with an orange logo underneath, and then on the outsole of the Midnight Navy colorway, you've got a darker blue rubber, which is still semi-translucent, and you can see through to the green logo underneath. So overall, I really like these Union LA Nike Dunk lows. I love the concept behind these shoes and the inspiration, and the way they turn that inspiration into a reality, and the way that they utilize these materials on this shoe is really, really cool. That being said, this is not my favorite pair of Nike Dunk lows. I just don't love ripstop. It's not a bad material. There's nothing wrong with it. I just prefer leather on my shoes. I know I have a lot of sneakers with ripstop on them that I really like, but uh, a shoe that's entirely covered in ripstop, it just doesn't do it for me. But again though, I think overall this is a great collaboration. I feel like they executed the concept flawlessly, and just looking back at some of the collaborations that Union LA has done, it just solidifies them as one of the best collaborators that Nike and Jordan brand has ever worked with. In fact, both of the Union LA Air Jordan 1s are some of my favorite pairs in my entire collection. In fact, I like the Storm Blue colorway so much, I proposed to my wife in that colorway. Like I love Union LA, I love their collaborations with Jordan brand and Nike, but this particular one, while it's a great collab, is not one of my favorite sneakers. So I would say if you like these shoes, definitely go for them. Honestly, they probably won't be the easiest shoes in the world to get because they are probably pretty limited. However, I have seen a lot of people get them early, so I would assume that there's more stock than maybe some of their other like Jordan collaborations. But with that being said, it's a great collab. They knocked it out of the park. And out of the three colorways that are dropping, like I said earlier on in the video, I think the Midnight Navy colorway is my personal favorite. This one just kind of has that classic Nike Dunk color blocking, which I really like. So for that reason, this is the one I'm going to go for personally. But at this point in the video, I would love to know your thoughts on the upcoming Union LA Nike Dunk Lows and which colorway is your favorite. So make sure to let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.